So yes. everyone's going to have a cocoon landed yeah, in here, yeah. <laughs> but it's my damn it car. Yours. Have you had seconds though? <laughs> you know what, I have back to back. <laughs> so focus on getting revenge on me, yeah. you lost focus on who the real enemy was. <laughs> Welcome to our first game session. So we're going to um, kind of intro a three player game of a chroma have a little game between the three of us where we've got two uh, Chroma decks and one Acrom deck. So I've got Dr. Cornelius Hugh. He is from the Fall of Flutterby um, and he is a, a teacher's deck um, and they've got some pretty interesting mechanics all from the realm of the fairies. Yep, I am going to play this deck, Countess Isadora Curdle. She is the occultist faction from our first set, Curse of Curdle Hill. Lots of witches and wizards and dark magic going on in my, in my deck. Cool. Um, I've got Dana Kusk. Um, Dana Kusk is one of the Draco defenders uh, from the Siege of Draco Temple release. Um, so a lot of my abilities are lots, lots of gaining. Um, I want to be getting lots of dragons down on the table. Um, I'm going to be working towards getting up to 30, I imagine. Yeah. You, you guys? Yeah, yeah. So. Both me and Dan will be working on the basis of trying to get ourselves up to 30 shards. So each player starts with a shard bank of 10. You either get your opponent down to zero, or get yourself up to 30. And Chris is going to be focused on trying to get us down to zero with his nasty occultist, whilst the two of us will try and get up to 30. But it's all the all, so I'm still trying to race against Dan to get up to the top. So we'll use the app to set up a match. <clears throat> so I'll start. Basically, when you're in the app and you've got an account, one player can start a game and that creates a code. And then the other players can join the game by typing in that code. And fingers crossed it will all work seamlessly like all live sessions do. <laughs> okay, cool. so shuffle up your palettes. It is Sheriff O Nothing's turn, so that's you, Dan. Alrighty. So draw five cards from the top. And that's your starting hand. Face down on the pallet. All right. And dregs is your discard pile, so when you're throwing cards away, that's where they go. This is your canvas, where all the cards we play are going to be played on the canvas. Char there's four different card types. We've got characters, we've got locations, we've got objects of power and actions. So when it comes to characters and locations, you play them down on the canvas. If it's an object of power, you have to have a character on your canvas, then you can attach the object to the character. And then if you're playing an action, you play it on the canvas, throw it in the dregs after you've done whatever that action tells you to do. Cool, yep. All right, so start step, draw or trade. Yep. All right, I'm gonna draw a card. Um, and then I am gonna go, so the attack step is next. I haven't got any characters out, so I won't be doing any attacking. So next up is the deploy step. So I can deploy up to three cards in my turn. Actions are the only cards that can be played outside of my deploy step. <clears throat> I'm keep it simple. I'm gonna deploy a monastery nest. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, that's gonna cost me three. Um, so it's a little bit of an investment there. And I'm gonna play Aruba Draco as well for two. And I am going to, I'm going to hold it just there. So you are allowed to play up to three cards in your turn, but that is up to your choosing yeah. just to play I two. I just want to play two now. Cool. So next up, I'm going to resolve. So I'm looking at these symbols here. So I've got a gain two and I've got a gain three. So with resolve, there's four different abilities that come into effect. Uh, you can either gain, which is these plus symbols. So every, all the cards have got a number in the top corner. If they've got a plus, that means you can add shards into your bank in the resolve step. If they've got a minus, that means you can drain from an opponent's shard bank during, their, uh, during your resolve step. And then if there's a plus and a minus together, that's stealing from somebody's shard bank and put it into yours. And then finally, you've got prevent, which is stopping someone from stealing or draining from you. You'll see these cards come down as we play. Yep. So I am right back up at 10 now. <clears throat> The great thing is, is that every turn that these cards are down on the canvas, they're gonna gain me shards. So a bit of an investment there. So the last step of my turn is draw a trade, which is exactly the same as the beginning. Um, and I am going to draw another card. Okay. All right, so yeah, that's the beginning of my turn. So 
got 10 shards in the bank. I'm going to start by drawing a card. I don't need to trade yet. Got an absolute classic that could come down in my... Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Let's start with a three shard cost fire tender. So the shards, the hex guns in the middle, each triangle represents a shard. Grey ones are empty, so you don't need to worry about them. But if they've got any colour or black in them, then that's how much you're going to have to pay out of your shard bank to play a card. Every card in the game has a shard value. Okay. So he's got action on him. That means it's something that you do when you play a card. Which is a good reminder because I nearly forgot. Yeah. So he says, find a card with one red triangle and shard value of three or less. So find means I can look through my palette find that card, put it in, show everyone, put it into my hand, shuffle my palette up again. So I'm going to do that. So let's have a little look-see. So anything with a red shard, it's shard so it doesn't value it doesn't, three or yeah, It doesn't have to be exactly one red, as long as it contains a red and it's less than three. Which, so I can't have something that's a four shard value. Don't, all right, how about, I'll go for a soaking stone, two Whoa. shard value one red shard and it's a stealing location and i think i will play that straight away so i will pay the two shards to play that from my hand and then i will also play i think we'll go oh, super low here down to one shard for old cocoon lantern okay what's cocoon lantern do so he's a rare card. The rarities of the cards are indicated by the uh, colour of the hexagon. So you've got a common, which is white. This is an uncommon silver. And this gold one here is the Cocoon Lantern rare. He's got a plus two. So I'll be getting that in the resolve. And then also a passive ability. Once per turn, when a character is erased from my canvas, I can gain the erased character's shards into my shard bank. So if anyone's going to get rid of Fire Tender, I get myself a nice three shards top up in the bank. That's my three cards. I'm down to one. I'm going to resolve. So I get plus two from Cocoon Lantern, plus one from Fire Tender. However, I won't be able to use the Steel ability until Chris has had his turn. So in any game of a Chroma that's multiplayer, or in fact even two player, you basically can't steal or drain from another player if uh, if before the end of the first round. Yeah, so you can't, you can't take from anyone until every person's had a turn. So. Yes. But cool. the final player in that round can start I draining can. and stealing. So on my turn, I will be able to. Uh oh. All so right, I'm on four. I am gonna still going. Trade? Yeah, I'm now in the trade step, which I think at this point, being on four is pretty low, and you're about to start as an Acron player. So I don't want to be too low. So I will trade this lava fountain. So trading is you take a card from your hand, you throw it away into the dregs, face up. And you add the shard value of that card into your shard bank. So I'm going to get three more shards in. So I've lost a card from my hand, but I've gained the shards in my bank. And that's going to end my turn. Okay, right. That's my first turn as well. I'm going to choose to draw, just like everybody else, because that is a, a good place to start. All right. I'm going to be really bad, I'm afraid. And I'm going to start with an action. Hostile takeover. One, two, three shards. And I know this one has a plus three, but I want the Cocoon Lantern, I'm afraid, to gain so me the shot. So it says, claim a location. So take another player's canvas. Take from another player's canvas and place on your own. I'm choosing Jack's Cocoon Lantern. That's now mine, I'm afraid. That's not fun. So then I'm going to go with... Should never have gone out there with a rare so early. <laughs> so, Craze Curdle Resident cost me one and it's got an action of a drain one so that's gonna happen now i'll choose you dan okay. because i have already picked on jack and stole his location so in the app you're able to tap on your opponent yep. and then their little avatar pops up and you can steal or drain from them using your own phone you don't have to even reach over and start tapping that's on people's right. phones or anything and the last one for my third card i'm gonna play another little one here prism sapper so that cost me one to play right so then my resolve phase, I've got a plus two from Cocoon Lantern, and I've got this minus one from Prism Sapper. So I'm sorry, Dan. I've, I feel yeah, like I've been yeah, too harsh no. on Jack already. So oh, one gonna, more from you. Do it. You're in a pretty strong place, right? I am. Oh, you, I've got my character as a little weak compared to your guys. So, and then so I've done my resolve. Draw a trade at the end of my turn. I'm on seven. I'm going to choose to draw a card. 
You'll go down. All right, um, draw or trade. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I am going to, I'm gonna trade. So one of the cool things about this, with the trading is that you can get your shards back for cards which aren't really gonna be applicable for the game. So I've got a card here, Dragon Defenses. It raises up to two drakes. Yep. I'm not up against any drakes. Yep. So quite nicely, I can get four shards back in my bank. That's what I'm saying. It's a good thing about a criminal set. There's never, you're never going to have a card that does nothing because the, in the worst case, you can always trade them for their shards. Um, so next up is the attack step. Mm -hmm. um, so I am going to declare my attacker, which is Ruba Draco. Yeah. And my target for Ruba Draco will be the Prism Sapper. That's fine. So Ruba Draco, we use his strength, which is in the middle there. He'll deal that much shard damage to the Prism Sapper, which is two. And the Prism Sapper will deal one in return. Yeah. So Ruba Draco will knock two shards out. Prism Sapper will knock one. The net result is that Ruba flies away with one shard left in his yep. hex until the end of the turn. So my Prism Sapper is erased, but good news. Two lantern uh, once per turn. When a character is raised from a canvas, gain the shards. Oh, I'll get my one. <laughs> so I went for the sapper because it's got a resolve ability, yeah, right? That's right. It's got so I'm trying to shut that down. One, yeah, that was a one, one shot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so each character can attack once a turn. So that is the end of my attack step. Yep. Um, I'm going to deploy. He's got a lot of shards over there. We need to do something about this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm going to deploy. I'm going to deploy a Glacies Draco. Oh, so Glacies okay. costs me three. And Glacies ability is something I can use every turn. It says once per turn, you may defend another character on your canvas. So what that means is if another character were to target Ruba, like my fire tender, <laughs> for example, <laughs> three, which would be um, enough Ruba to Drake, take your Ruba yeah. Draco out. Like Glacies can swing in, intercept that attack, and the the combat would occur between the fire tender and Glacies instead. Yes. So that's down there, and then. My next trick, I'm going to play Loquatio Draco for three. Now, Loquatio Draco has got an action ability, so it's a one time, one use ability, and that is draw a card. So that nicely makes up for um, not drawing at the beginning of this turn. <clears throat> and then, last, th so I've played two cards now, I can play one more, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to play a little hatchling, just for one. And that's going to get me a one in the resolve step, which is where I'm going next. So I'm going to gain three. One, two, three. I'm going to gain two. One, two. I'm going to gain one. So I'm back up to 11. Draw or trade. Um, feeling lucky. I'm going to go for a draw and then I'm going to pass turn. Okay, right. Well, I've been stitched up <laughs> and screwed over. Not good. Um, so I will start. Plan, don't worry. I will, I will start with a draw because I need some <laughs> options. Um, I could attack, but if I attack Dan, I'm going to end up losing my fire tender. So sorry, but Craze Curdle Resident is going to have to go get erased. Hold on, I've got a Cocoon Lantern. <laughs> Does that happen every time? Once per turn when oh. a character's raised. Oh. My own. It's only one. Stumped <laughs> by my own. Look at this guy's army, I've just got one. I know. And then what we need to do is get Fire Tender buffed up a bit with a Toadstool Cannon. So this is an object of power. Um, so you can just lay it down, kind of overlapping your card, your character, uh, just to signify that it's attached in some way to the So character. they can only be deployed by attaching it to a character, yeah, you right? can't Yeah, you can't play an object of power onto your canvas if you don't have a character to attach it to. This Toadstool Cannon has got a two strength and a two shard cost, so that means yeah. that when he's played, he's now added to the strength of my fire tender. So my fire tender was three. Now you're going to add both those up. He's a five and a nice prevent two right, up yeah. there. Hopefully That's we can see he might get into some uh, some combat later and we can run through the attack when we've got an object of power. So, yep, prevent two. That means that if someone's going to try and steal or drain from me, they are going to be blocked at the They're pass. They're going to be disappointed. Yeah, they are. All right, what 
Anything else Sorely got? disappointed. Um, I think we need a little friendly Fungua down yeah. to just get the party started. So Fungua, funny. he's a bit of a cult classic already. Um, basically, he's a two cost, two um, strength little caterpillar and he's poisonous. So that means that if he gets in a fight with any other characters, if they're bigger and stronger, he will still be able to defeat them. However, if that character's got an object, that could block the poison, but we'll get to that if needs be. Yep. Um, okay, I am going to, um, I'm gonna go all down to one. I'm loving this each turn Drake with a Drake on, a little two drop plus two. Um, so I'll get my money back from him straight away. So I will now resolve, played all my cards, so plus one fire tender, plus two for Draken, and then I will steal one from Sheriff for nothing, because he is going to get to the top too Why quick if I me? don't. And then I will end with, oh my god, I'm on five, drawing a card, because it's not even worth me trading what I've got. Your turn. I haven't got anything to, to drain you out right yet, so I'm going to start with drawing a card for my turn. Okay. I am going to play Selective Diminish for five. Oh, are you kidding me? But it lets me erase up to one character, one location, and one object of power with any Chroma Shards. So we'll start with object, it's the only one. And you don't have to choose one colour in particular. Nope. With any, any Chroma Shards, so All locations, right. I've got two choices here. Shall I just Sorry, put it away now? Yeah, yeah. You've got to go. Right. Okay. Now, to, to pick on an unsuspecting character, Dracon, Ruba, I mean Fungua. Fungua's a I'm sorry, right? Ruba Draco, you're Ruba getting Draco. too much. So, yeah. He's getting too much for you. Yep, yeah. he's oh, gone. Man. If only I had a cocoon lantern. Yeah. <laughs> so shard values with the the colours, you've got Acron, which is black, and then Chroma, which is all the other colours. So yep. in that instance, that card gave me the ability to erase anything that had any Chroma. But obviously, if it was just a solid Acrom card, you wouldn't have been able to erase it. That's right, but luckily you guys playing some nice colourful decks. Very prime nice. targets for me. And my second card, a cultish shaman. One, two, oh, three. Here we go. So this has the keyword dig, which means I can go through my discard pile. So I can dig for a character with any black with the black shard and shard value of one and deploy them immediately for free. Okay. Okay, that leaves me on one shard, so I can't play anything else. So I'll go to my resolve phase. I've got a plus two from a cocoon lantern. And I've got a minus one from the prism sapper. And then being on three and needing to fuel myself, I'm going to trade away. I'm sorry, Green Raven, but you're you're gone. It's three. Another one. Green Raven. I don't know why you dispose of such a <laughs> important you down. card. <laughs> a majestic beast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, okay. Draw or trade? I'm going to go for a draw. And I'm now in my attack step. Lots of options here. I've got a lot of options here. So I think I am going to start with, I'm going to take out the Prism Sapper with the Loquatio. That's my shard from my Cocoon Lantern. Just a one. Just a one. <laughs> um, and then Glacies can attack also. So, so one character can attack once yeah. each turn. So right. that was which one did you do? Le Quatio. Le Quatio yes, he's, attacked. He's kind of done for this turn, yeah. Glacies is going to swing in and chomp Dracon. What? Just because he's little. Okay. Yes. So obviously I'm because, because Drago Hatchin is small, he doesn't want to do any, any attacking. So. <clears throat> Especially with what I've got up my sleeve. Oh dear. Mm. Okay. That doesn't sound good. So I'm going to play, and my deploy step, another Loquatio Draco. Mm. One, two, three. Action, draw a card. Um, and I'm going to play, my second card is a Minima Draco. Ooh. It's going to cost me three. One, two, three. So that's got an action. So I've got an action ability. Choose another player, draw a card for each character on their canvas. So we've got one character over here, we got two here, so clearly that one. <laughs> I choose you. So I'm going to draw a couple of cards uh, there. Yeah. Um, I can play one more card this Lift turn. Myself down on three here. <laughs> so I'm going to play strength in numbers. Oh. So that cost me two. Gain two for each dragon character on your canvas. So 
although this is in um, this this is a symbol for gain because it is an action it gets resolved here and now so I'm gonna gain two four six eight ten that's oh a lot of dragons so it's up to eleven don't like this well, well, it's okay we can we can fight this dragon army goes goes there so my resolve step I don't trust you not one bit <laughs> <laughs> never trust an occultist <laughs> gain one and gain one. So I haven't got a lot going on in the resolve step at the moment. That was that could have been my peak mm. just then. <laughs> could have peaked. I <laughs> could have peaked yeah. already. It's all downhill from right. here. Um, I'm, I'm going to draw, and then I'm going to pass turn. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Come on, Fangwa. I am going <laughs> to take it risky and draw a card because I'm low on stock, and it's kind of worked out all right, I think. So I can attack. Um, I've got a little poison spungwa that could take out some of these three cost cards. But he's got the defender. No, so it would only be that one. Because really, I want to get that minima Draco off the. So with the shaman, that ability to dig in your dregs for a character—that was an action, wasn't it? So that it was, was like a one-shot thing. You yep. can't do it again. That's right. Okay. So the shaman, he will be. He'll be providing attack support on my turn, don't worry. I'm gonna leave attacking. I, I've got, I'm, I'm, got I'm on my plus one from Fire Tender. Yeah. Fungwa is preciously poisonous, so right, he's, he's a deterrent, isn't he? He's a deterrent. <laughs> I don't need. What's he deterring? <laughs> you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then also, I am gonna do a classic. Total Cannon on Fire Tender. Ooh. Mark two. Okay. So I'm in a safe position because I've got the feeling a Cultist Shaman might be coming my way, but it's okay. I've I was going to do Minimum Draco if you got rid of the Glacies, but now I can't. No, you can't. <laughs> You'll have to deal with the Glacies for me and then I'll go and do the Draco. <laughs> mm. Mm. <sighs> right, I will, I will actually stop there and resolve. So I'll get myself a plus one take one from Sheriff of Nothing because he's just stacking up the shards um, and I will end by trading another card so one two three for the lava fountain two of those have gone now right. and I will pass it over to you got a plan right so I'm gonna start with drawing a card okay my attacks phase now a call to shaman I'm gonna Let's see how this plays out. I'm gonna attack uh, Minima Draco. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> well, Glacius Draco <laughs> has a defendability. Okay, right. So Glacius is gonna take the attack. He's gonna swoop in to protect poor little Minima yeah. Draco. Well, we're still three here, so that's all good. Three so on three. Both are raised. But, Cocoon Lantern. Get your three shards back. Uh, you scoundrel. Yeah. Right, so for my deploy, I've got a rare location on my own. A cultist den for Why five. Why are you just rubbing it in? Someone, needs to, no, I've got no, yeah. Someone needs to take care of that. So once oh, during no. your turn, you may dig for an occultist character. Mrs. Shaman. And then I'll play the Mrs. Shaman. One, two, three. And get the sapper back. Oh, for the same ability. Of, the action ability. Yep. Yep. That was um, a nice little chain. Oh, a cultist den isn't just an uh, action, is it? That's during nope. your turn. Du every during your turn, time. I can do every turn. And I've got one final question: What's better than one prism sapper? Two prism sappers. I'm oh, do that. he's cutting it fine. <laughs> it's okay though. Right. So I'm going to go to my resolve. I've got my two pluses from Cocoon Lantern. Now I've got two steels and two drains here. But the Toadstool Cannon is going to prevent. Too, yeah. so there's not a lot of point going over this way. Plus, Sheriff and Nothing is higher. Yeah. So I'm going to press. I've got my one, two steals, and my one, two drains. Leaves me on a five, which is a little bit healthier. And I'll draw for the end of my turn. So if Chris had targeted me, yep. uh, the prevent two would have meant that I could choose to prevent two. Yeah. So if he start, started with the stealing, yeah. I'd have prevented the steal. I could have let the drain come through and then I still would have prevented the yeah. steal. So but yeah, ultimately I'm, I'd only prevent two out of his four. Yeah, that's right. So it's just not worth it for him to so go. So yeah, I, I would have, I got the, essentially if I went all for you, you would have stopped my steal as that was yeah. better for you and I wouldn't have got the shards anyway. So, but let's go all for that. <laughs> exactly. 
Right. And then Come on, Dragon Army, show us what you're you going to do. What you got I've done do? my resolve already, so oh, I've did all. God, okay. I've, uh, so yeah, so I've done my draw instead of trade. All right, so so just one of the last. I feel safer on five than than you guys because your decks are not primarily trying to drain and steal me out. Yeah. I know we've got one steal here, yeah. but uh, yeah, I think that I'll survive on five, so I'm happier leaving it low than, than you guys. So. All right, okay, so you've chipped away at my shard bank, so I've got less to play with right now. So it's tempting to trade, but I'm going to go for a draw. Okay. Draw. <clears throat> okay. Attack. Let's see what we've got here. I am going to attack Loquatio Draco. Let's see what have we got here. Well, Loquatio Draco is going to attack the Prism Sapper. Okay, I'll do that. And I will... So this is where I have to make a decision here mm -hmm. because I could either choose to gain this one, but I'd rather gain three from a Cult of Shaman if she's going to die. But I don't think she will. I'm going to gain the one from the Prism Sapper. Okay. So that one's had its attack. It has. I'm going to play <laughs> the Quasio Draco. <laughs> is going to attack. Okay, Prism Sapper. that's fine. So I can only do my Cocoon Anthem once. So All right, okay. Right. What about these little ones? These little guys over here. I really want to keep hold of these because they've got some nice okay. resolve abilities. So I'm going to move on. Um, that isn't everything I wanted to attack, so I'm going to play Breath of Fire. Oh, Ooh. I like to see that. So Breath of Fire is an action, cost me four, yep. erase a character and a location. So first up location, <laughs> it's really between the Occultist <laughs> Den and yeah. the Cocoon Lantern. What about Soaking Stone? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Soaking Stone? Yeah. No, so um, right now I think the the biggest threat is that occultist den so the occultist den has got to go okay yeah. choose your character and the character that has to go oof now if i took out fire tender the toastal cannon would get erased also that is true because he's holding the object and the character would be going into the drag so with the object however it is this is probably the best way i could get rid of fungwa without attacking and um, and there's also this occultist no. shaman, you know, who's <laughs> yeah. just hanging out over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose, and it would stop the occultist uh, player from gaining, gaining three, shards. three shards because you've already used the Cocoon Lantern's yeah. ability, I mean, right? That is true. That is true, right? He's got options. All right. I think what's going to happen here is we're going to we're going to scorch what? that shaman. Outrageous. I like it. Okay. Um, so I have played one card of three. I can play another two cards. And I think. I've got one card left and it's not even mine. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shouldn't even be on your canvas. Monastery list. Oh, number two. Two, three. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to resolve. So I'm going to gain three. One, two, three. I'm going to gain one. I'm going to gain one. And Great. then at the end of my turn, I will draw a card and I'll pass turn. Okay, so I am going to start my turn. I'm going to draw a card to get started. I can now attack. Um, get all up. right, so we got rid of the old... Uh, um, the defender. The, the glacier. The defender's glacier is gone. So Fungwa is going to have a go at nom, nom. Minima Draco. Yep. So, so it'll be a three on a two. Yep. However, because he's poisonous, it doesn't matter that he's not as strong as Minima. He's given that poisonous bite and Minima's gone down. Yep. Boom. And then um, I could attack with my other, with my fire tender. I will get rid of the Draco Hatchling also. So, so one versus here? five. If in the instance with, a, with an object, an object is breakable, it can break. If anything is the same strength or stronger than the number of the object, the strength of the object, the object will have to go in the dregs. In this case, the hatchlings are one, the object is a two, and the fire tender is a three. So the object's not going to break, the Draco hatchling is going to be erased, and so, fire tender can stand there with his toastal cannon for next time. So just for example, if obviously that's, if you had chosen the Loquatio Draco, 
which is three, that would be enough damage to, to break the object yes. and that would be erased. And then yeah. any, anything remaining the fire goes tender, through. Yeah. But the yeah. fire tender right. still has shards left, he would be alive. So. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, we'll then pay two to play another Dracon. Hopefully he'll Ooh, live a bit longer. Lots of Dracons. Um, and I will then um, I will then resolve. So we're going to get plus two for Dracon. And then I've got a little plus one hiding there, fire tender. And then steal one from Sheriff of Nothing. Of course. Well, no, maybe Chillman. What You're about I even. You've got my cocoon lantern. <laughs> and it's really annoying. So one from you. Then I will I take any from end you. by drawing a card. Your turn. Draw a card. Think we will play Sorcerer up with Fire Us. So he leaves me on two. That is all I can do for now. So I'll go to my resolve phase. I've got my two for my lantern. And then I've got my steel one for each occultist, which is just him. But unfortunately, because of this Total prevents... cannon, stopping that steel. It's going to have to go over here. This is Leave why me I, on I can five. set him on you. Yeah, yeah. And then just by having this, <laughs> turns the tide. And then, end of my turn, I am going to discard another occultist shaman for three. Ooh. Trade that way. Keep me nice and high. Right. Over, over to dragons. You. Okay. Well, things aren't looking as rosy over here as they were five minutes ago. Um, what I'm going to do then is, I'm going to draw, and I'm going to go to my attack phase. Mm. Now, let's see what happens here. What I'm going to do is, first of all, Loquatio Draco is going to attack Fire Tender. Whoa, okay, so what we've got here is Loquatio's got three strength, Total Cannon is two, so as we start the fight and we start looking at who's going to damage what, that's clearly got to go. First two points of damage go to the cannon. Yep, yep. One left over, goes through the fire tender. Yeah. So he's, he's got on. three at the moment. It's down to two where he remains till the end of the turn. Yep, yep. But in return, the Quatio Draco he took, five. took five points of damage. Yep, he Plus is shots. out of there. Yep. Okay, it was a it was it was a sacrifice for sure. Yeah, and in uh, just to remind anyone who's playing the game, when you've got um, shard damage, your strength of your character stays at the number in the middle. So even though he's only got two shards in here, he is still three strong. So if Loquacio wanted to kill Fire Tender, yeah. it would also get rid of Loquacio. Yeah. So what's Loquacio number two do? Loquacio number two. The return. Dracon. Oh. The return of the Loquacio. So two damage came yep. back. Equatio's hanging in there on one shard till the end of the turn. All right. All right, so I'm gonna to move to my deploy. Only the five shards to play with. So Only five shards to play with. Monastery nest has just been a <laughs> staple. Well, without that, you'd be in trouble. You'd yeah. have two yeah. monastery nests. If only there was a way <laughs> I could have another <laughs> monastery nest. Oh, there it is. So I'm gonna play Mirror Sanctum for one shard. So, Mirror Sanctum, deploy as a copy of another location, gaining all of its abilities. So I could, I can take that, that copy can come from any canvas. So you've got a Soaking Stone as an option, Cocoon, Cocoon Lantern, Lantern is an option, or Monastery Nest. Now, initially I'm thinking I can get another gain three at the end of my turn. That cocoon lantern's got a game two. <laughs> so everyone's going to have a cocoon lantern yeah, with me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's my damn <laughs> it card. So Mirror Sanctum is going to deploy lantern. as a copy of Cocoon Lantern. So everything about my mirrored cocoon lantern is the yep. same apart from the shard value. That's right. right there. So it stays as one blue shard, but it gets the plus two and it gets this ability. Awesome. Okay. I'm happy with that. Um, now I'm on four at the moment. Uh, what I think I need to do here is um, a little tiny whelp for two. Yep. Now whelp has, has an action ability. If you have another dragon character on your canvas, draw a card. Okay, uh, that's where I'm going to end that. Okay. And I'm going to go on to my resolve step. So I'm going to resolve, I'm going to gain three, yep. two, three. 
and then my mirror sanctum is a cocoon lantern right, for a game two. two. Um, and then it's the end of my turn, draw or trade, and I am going to, I'm gonna trade in Corellium Draco and get okay. three back. Right. Puts me up at 10 and I'm gonna pass turn. All right, right. so I will start by drawing a card. Um, and then I will look at attacking. So Fire Tender could take on the Sorcerer, or Loquatia, or the Draco Welp. I think we'll go for the Draco Welp. Okay, so it's a three on a two. two. And but Cocoon Lantern. <laughs> cocoon Lantern. <laughs> Once, what is that? What's Once during a turn when a character is erased from a canvas, gain their erased character's shards. All right. Two shards for you. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, um, and you. I don't like this lack of preventing, so pay one for a chroma worm. He's got prevent one. It just gives me a little bit of protection against the old stealing over there. Um, and then I will resolve, so I will get plus one. Steal one from Sheriff for nothing. And then at the end, I'm going to draw a card and then pass over to you. All right, I'm gonna draw a card to start with. I'm gonna do my attacks. So Sorcerer, can he can get rid of Chroma Worm. Yeah. That's all he can do, he wants to stay alive. We can play Cultist Warlock. So he cost me two. Then I'll go to my Resolve phase. I gain two from my Cocoon Anton. And I've got one steal from the Occultist Warlock. And this guy here, he gives me three. Let's see, he's gonna have two. So one for each Occultist, one for himself, one for this one, plus this one is three. And so you can I'm, split those three. I can, but I'm going want. for Davil Sounds because he. So you can on me. split. Ooh. You can split them however you want. You yeah. can. And you're sure that's how you want to split them? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, you, you can split. So, for example, this is getting me plus one, so it's stealing one for each occultist. So he gets me two steal. Mm. Because that's on one card, I couldn't I couldn't split that. Yeah. But so I've got a one and a two that I could split. If you have three with steal one, you can split however you want. So, But that leaves me an 11 and draw for the end of my turn. And over to you, Dan. All right, okay, I'm gonna draw. <clears throat> and I'm going to attack. And my attack is going to be Equatio Draco. Yep. And Equatio Draco is going to attack by Ferris. Ooh. Are you mad? Uh, mirror I? Sanctum. I mean, you're all going to so be gaining. We're going to get three each for that. Gain, gain, gain. <laughs> we do that. We get three each. Little game Jesus. party. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. Uh, next up, I'm going to go to my deploy step. Um, and I'm going to deploy. An Ignis. Oh. One, two, three, four. So when Ignis attacks, erase a character or location from the same canvas with a shard value of three or less. Okay. Next trick will be um, I'm going to go for a Minima Draco. One, two, three. Action, choose another player. Draw a card for each character on their canvas. Oh, uh, you can pick her either of us. Yeah. Chris, I choose you. If you would have killed Fire Tender, yeah, oh, yeah, could yeah. have got another card. Only, if <laughs> only. Um, and then I will do one more. Strengthen numbers for two. It's an action, so it's a one shot. Gain two for each dragon character on your canvas. So I'm gonna get four back. Three, four. And that's there. A, lot, a lot of pluses in your corners there. Mm. And then I'm going to go to my resolve step where I'm going to gain two, I'm going to gain one, I'm going to gain three, and then Mirror Sanctum is a cocoon lantern, so I'm going to gain two. And then I'm going to trade. He's going for it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Trade Dragon Pendant, that's going to get me three back. Take me up to 19, and then I'm going to pass turn. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to start by trading this dismantle for three. We need to try and find a way Fire to stop it. Fire is attacking the Occultist Warlock. <sighs> you stole from me. I got a game two from that. From the At least um, Cocoon Lantern gains me shards. Pixie Prison is coming in for three. Oh. This gives me an action, which is an optional 
erase a character or erase all pixie characters. As there's no pixies down, <laughs> we're going for a single character, and I think it's got to be Ignis. Ah, uh, so he that's, will erase that's, Ignis. That's but four I, shards you've got to I give him for that. I will get four shards because of my mirrored cocoon. Oh, damn it. One, two, three, four. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Um, I fear I fear for us over here. Okay, so then I will resolve, so I get plus one, two, three, and I steal one from Sheriff for nothing because he's got so many. I've got and one. And then I will draw a card. It's your go. Right. I will draw a card. <laughs> I'm just going to play... Oh, no, that's going to... No, right. All I can't stop him, I don't think. Uh, Colonel Village, it cost so me focus three. On getting revenge on me. <laughs> yeah. And you lost focus on who the real two. enemy was. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's all I could do. Cocoon Lantern will gain me two in my resolve. And then I've got a steel one and a drain two. Ooh, so I've kept him to 19. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, I think it will and be. And draw. Right. Go there. Right. You'll go. All right, over you go. You might have enough to trade for the I win. I got it, yeah. Right. Okay, so I'm at 19. Yes. I need to get to 30. Yep. I'm only 11 away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin my turn. I'm going to trade. I'm going to trade a ring of fire oh, yeah. for three. One, two, three. I am... I mean, I may <laughs> as well suicide. attack. What, why don't you, you need to suicide him? Why do I need to suicide him? What, to get my oh. cocoon lantern? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I don't think I need to. Oh, sorry. I don't think I need to. I don't oh. need to. Well, in that case, I'll that. get the cocoon lantern. So you get it. Um, <clears throat> and then all I do is I'll go to my resolve step. I'll get three. One, two, three. I'll get two there. I'll get one there. Oh, wow. And then I can either draw or trade. Yes. Yeah. How many cards have you got? I've got one card. <laughs> go on then. Draw one. Oh, Lacey's drink. Oh, right. One, two. Oh, there it is. It's over. Oh, good, good game. game. Guys. Good game, guys. Thank you very well. Thank you. Oh, disappointing for I'm the leave for it. Cultists. You know what? I have bat to back. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, that. Just a bit of a run through of, of how Kramer works. Yeah, hopefully we've got more gameplay videos coming for you guys coming soon that you can watch. We'll link everywhere where you can find us down below. Uh, say we've got a really good Discord community that is thriving for lots of questions and anything you might want to ask there. But yeah, all, all of the usual social links and, and getting started with buying some cards will be in the, the, the links below the video. So, cool, thank you very much. Bye.